there is no greater illustration of our commitment here to NATO, which after all remains and should be a nuclear alliance, than our investment in our independent nuclear deterrent submarine force. Britain's commitment to the alliance, the, the bedrock of our defense, remains absolute. And in the last year alone, we have increased our contribution. We have been policing the skies of the Black Sea. We've been leading half the maritime missions. And we have been increasing our contribution to mentoring and training in Afghanistan. This morning, our Prime Minister is in Estonia visiting the 800 uh, British troops who, supported by our French and Danish allies, are leading NATO's enhanced forward presence and providing vital reassurance to our East European allies. Uh, NATO's principles of collective defence. Were North Korea to attack America, would you pledge our nuclear deterrent in support of the United States? And uh, Secretary General, on that sort of same theme, H.R. McMaster recently said that they had drawn up plans to show the President for a possible preventative strike. Would NATO support the United States if they decided that a preventative strike against North Korea was their only option? Well, if I can try the first one and then Jens come in on the second. It's hypothetical to speculate on what kind of uh, assistance the United States might want from its allies in any particular situation. We're working hard with the administration uh, to use every diplomatic channel to bring this uh, dangerous, provocative and illegal testing program to a halt. Uh, we work uh, with uh, the United States in tightening enforcement of existing resolutions to ensure that the new resolution is uh, properly implemented and we're, we are working too with our European partners to see what further sanctions can be implied within the uh, European Union and to bring further pressure on uh, China to deal with its, uh, its neighbour. We continue to work for a peaceful, political, negotiated solution to the crisis uh, in Korea and uh, we continue to strongly condemn the testing, the, the development of missiles and nuclear uh, weapons. At the same time, every nation has the right to defend itself and of course also the United States has the right to defend itself against attacks and NATO is there uh, to defend uh, all allies and, uh, and uh, uh, that's part of self-defense which is in her, uh, part of also the UN uh, Charter. Um, we will uh, continue to work for maximum pressure on uh, North Korea uh, to create the conditions for a negotiated uh, solution. We call on North Korea to abandon uh, its uh, missile programs and uh, nuclear programs and we support uh, the uh, efforts uh, uh, to step up uh, the pressure on uh, Korea, including with uh, economic uh, sanctions. Today we mark a particular milestone of the 350th patrol. So before I continue, I would like on your behalf to thank all our brave submariners and the submarine enterprise as a whole. For almost 50 years now, it is their efforts and those of their predecessors who have kept Britain safe every hour of every day. And this event today gives us a unique opportunity to remind ourselves of why our nuclear program remains so significant. First, as I said, it's about protecting our people. The nuclear deterrent we have here remains our only defense against the most extreme threats to our way of life. And those threats have been intensifying, whether they come from North Korea's uh, testing program, launching ballistic missiles, reinforcing her reckless defiance of the international community, or Russia, not content with aggression in the Ukraine, ramping up its nuclear rhetoric, exercising in thousands on the borders of NATO. 
Um, I wonder, uh, Julian Barnes, of Wall Street Journal, uh, to uh, the Defense Secretary, um, uh, Russia uh, tested uh, a ICBM as at the end of uh, the Zapad exercise. There were their strategic subs were part of that. Um, uh, is is it time for NATO to integrate nuclear aspects into its conventional uh, uh, exercise? And to the Secretary General, do the does the the sort of nuclear aspect of Zapad make this event today more important for NATO to emphasize its nuclear deterrent in the face of Russian tests and also North Korean tests? We have always been very clear that we distinguish between uh, our nuclear capabilities and our con con conventional capabilities. At the same time, we are exercising both, of course, our con conventional weapons and systems and capabilities and our nuclear uh, uh, capabilities. Uh, uh, we have responded to a more assertive Russia. We have seen that over many years. Uh, they are exercising their forces, they are exercising their nuclear forces, they are invested heavily in upgrading both the conventional forces and the nuclear forces. And we have responded to that in many different uh, ways, not least by increasing our presence in the eastern part of the alliance with the battle groups, uh, one of them led by uh, uh, the UK. But we are not matching uh, 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 solder by solder or tank by tank or plane by plane or nuclear capability by nuclear capability what the Russians are doing. We are responding in our way and, uh, and, uh, and we make sure that we continue to have strong and uh, reliable defense and uh, deterrence. I have not much more to add to that. I mean, we, uh, we're part of NATO's uh, conventional deterrence. Those are the troops that the Prime Minister is inspecting uh, this moment, this morning. But we're also part of strategic deterrence as well, and uh, the best answer of all to Russia is that we are renewing our deterrent. We have set aside uh, um, a very large uh, program to renew the four uh, Trident boats by the dreadnoughts that we're constructing now. Larissa, Daily Mail. Thank you. Uh, Secretary of State, are UK defence planners currently um, preparing militarily for a war with North Korea? And if the US did uh, attack North Korea, would the UK be ready to stand, stand in and help? Uh, and Secretary General, would NATO invoke Article 5 if North Korea uh, struck the island of Guam with missiles? Well, on the first, of course, we're working very closely with the United States on the all the diplomatic pressure that is needed now to bring this illegal testing program to a halt. And I've described the various channels that we're uh, exercising at the moment uh, with the United Nations, uh, with our partners and inside the, the European Union. We have to exhaust every conceivable diplomatic channel before we uh, start uh, considering uh, any kind of uh, military action. So NATO is there to defend all allies based on the principle one for all and all for one. And we have to remember that the only time NATO has invoked our Article 5 was after an attack on the United States, 9-11-2001. Having said that, I think I will only add to uncertainty if I start to speculate uh, about uh, how we will react uh, to many different hypothetical uh, uh, situations. We are there, uh, uh, we, we monitor the situation very closely. Uh, but I will not start to speculate exactly how we will react to different uh, possible uh, uh, situations. Now, we remain here in the United Kingdom absolutely committed to the longer term goal of a world without nuclear weapons. Two years ago, I reduced the number of deployed warheads on each of our four submarines from 48 to 40. We reduced the number of operationally available warheads and we remain committed to reducing our overall stockpile of nuclear warheads to no more than 180 by the mid-2020s. But at the same time, we have to be realistic. When I reduced those numbers, the total number of nuclear weapons in the world did not suddenly fall. We cannot now uninvent nuclear weapons, and our deterrent ensures that our adversaries are left in no doubt that the benefits of any attack NATO will be vastly uh, outweighed by the consequences.
And that deterrent is not just essential for our security. It is essential for NATO's security as well. It forms one of the Alliance's key centers of decision-making that complicates the calculations of our adversaries. What is more, many of the nations represented here today signed the Non-Proliferation Treaty in the late 1960s in the knowledge that they were covered from then on by NATO's nuclear umbrella, including the United Kingdom nuclear Not only did that help halt the nuclear arms race at the time, it has also helped to cut the world's nuclear stockpile. And it is no coincidence that there hasn't been a major conflict involving any of the nuclear-powered states since the end of the Second World War. Finally, our independent deterrent is a promise to our future. We can't know what threats lie around the corner. Yet by giving the next generation every means necessary from the conventional through to the nuclear to deal with whatever comes around the corner, we are strengthening their hand. We are ensuring that they will have the means to deter potential threats into the 2040s, the 2050s, the 2060s and beyond. And that is why we are building now four dreadnought class submarines to enter service in the early 2030s. And that is why we are spending 1.3 billion sterling over the next 10 years here at this base at Faz Lane. And it is why, too, Faz Lane will become a Royal Navy submarine center of specialization for all the United Kingdom's submarine, employing already some 7,000, rising to 8,200 in the future. So I hope that all of you find this visit today instructive and informative. I hope you will leave here uh, confident in the knowledge that we remain not just 100% committed to our NATO alliance, but 100% committed to our deterrent, a message that our parliament confirmed in an overwhelming vote last year to maintain and renew our continuous at sea deterrent. Now, we are never complacent about our deterrent as we look forward to next year's NATO summit and beyond. We have to ensure that the Alliance's political and military leaders continue to recognize the importance of nuclear capabilities as NATO adapts and modernizes and continues to make the case for the importance of nuclear weapons to a whole new generation. Our safety here, the strength of the Alliance and the security of the world depends on us discharging that responsibility.